Hello, students. All right, today we're going to have some fun with a genetics tool that I left you yesterday uh, with a cliffhanger trying to figure out what this tool was. And I left you yesterday with a picture that looked like this. Uh, the tool is called a Punnett square. A Punnett square. And the Punnett square has nothing to do with punting balls. Okay? A Punnett square is a tool, not like a hammer tool, but a, an intellectual tool that a person who studies genetics uses to show the possible gene combinations in a cross between two organisms. In other words, it shows genetic probability. Yesterday, I shared with you some thoughts about probability. And we looked at flipping a coin. And we looked at rolling a dotted cube. And we talked about the probability of a certain outcome for both of those objects. Well, today we're going to learn how a geneticist uses a Punnett square in order to calculate the probability that two organisms will have offspring with certain genotypes as well as certain phenotypes. So we're going to have some fun with these Punnett squares today, uh, but I'll make sure that you have this written down first. Again, a Punnett square is used to show the possible gene combinations in a cross between two organisms. Again, it shows genetic probability. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, I was uh, taking advantage of the proper use of my elbow while I sneezed. All right, so let's get moving here to Punnett squares. Here is an example of a Punnett square. The shape of the Punnett square is, as you can probably guess, a square. And inside the square are four squares. You'll notice in your book, I have examples of Punnett squares for you. And I also have spaces above and to the left of the Punnett squares. And you'll see why in a moment. So a Punnett square is, in fact, four squares in one. Now, for this first example, we're going to cross two organisms. Now, again, keep in mind, we're not just talking about humans. We're not just talking about dogs. It could be plants. It could be any organism that reproduces sexually, meaning a male and a female come together to produce offspring. So the terms we're using, I want you to think carefully about synonyms. Think carefully about prefixes and word meaning. I want you to be looking at your notes as we're talking about how to create these Punnett squares because you need to be familiar with terminology. So I'm going to be asking you lots of questions about the words before we even get to filling out and using the Punnett squares. So let's begin. We are going to cross two organisms, one of which is going to be a purebred recessive. The other will be a purebred dominant. Now, let's look at the words. Purebred. Somebody tell me, what is a synonym? What is a word that means the same thing as purebred? And look in your notes to figure this out. All right, hopefully you came up with the term homozygous. A purebred means 
homozygous. And if you recall what homozygous means, the homo prefix means the same. And the zygous refers to what word? Zygote. And what is a zygote, everybody? A fertilized egg. So there's a lot of information packed into simple words here. So purebred also is homozygous. Same traits. Purebred, same traits. Now the other part here is recessive. Another question for you. I'll make this one multiple choice. Recessive. Is it the stronger or weaker trait? Weaker trait. Very good. Next. Do we illustrate or represent recessive with capital or lowercase letters? Lowercase letters. Very good. So let's put this together. Purebred recessive. What does that really mean? It means homozygous, both the same trait, recessive, both are going to be lowercase. So purebred recessive means both letters will be lowercase letters for the genotype. And by the way, what is a genotype? The genetic makeup. Now, we're going to cross that parent with a purebred dominant. Now, the purebred is the same. Homozygous means both the same trait or characteristic. But dominant, is that the stronger or weaker? Stronger, capital or lowercase, capital. Now, I know we've talked a lot about these words here, and you may be getting confused. Don't worry. Take a deep breath and relax. <sighs> We're going to work through this together, and I think by the end, you'll have it figured out and mastered. So we've got a homozygous recessive two lowercase letters, and a homozygous dominant, two capital letters. So here's what we've got. First parent, the purebred recessive, we write the genotype on the top of the Punnett square. The second parent, the purebred dominant, both capital letters, we write to the, woo, to the, there we go, to the, trying to point to that side, woo, woo, there we go, to the left side of the Punnett square. Do you see up top two lowercase b's, and we're just using b. I'm giving you the letter b as an arbitrary letter right now for the genes because I think we can easily write a capital and lowercase b without confusing them. Uh, o's and s's, a little bit more difficult. So we've got the purebred recessive, lowercase b, lowercase b on the top. The purebred dominant, uppercase or capital B, capital B over on the left hand side. Now, these two pairs of letters represent the possible genes from each parent that are being shared potentially with offspring. So with the Punnett square, with the Punnett squares we are going to be working with, we always have two letters on the top, two letters on the side. The two letters on the top are from the first parent. Two letters on the left side are from the second parent. So what do we do now that we have the letters? Well, here's what we do. By the way, once you have set up a Punnett square, the rest is, is relatively easy. Here's what we do. In each of the four squares... You take the letter from above and the letter to the left and you join them together. So here we have in this square, 
we've got the letter up top coming down into this square and the letter on the left coming into the square to give us a new genotype possibility of an offspring of capital B, lowercase b. Now, I want to point out a couple of things here. In each of the four squares of the Punnett square, you do the same thing. You look above and to the left, and you bring them together. Whenever you have a dominant and a recessive trait together, in other words, whenever you have a capital and a lowercase letter in the same square, the uppercase letter, the capital letter, the dominant trait is always written first. And in each of the four squares, you're going to have two letters, one from one parent, one from the other parent. And these four squares in the Punnett square represent the possible genotypes for these two particular parents. So again, completing a Punnett square, we're using the letter from above and to the left, putting them together in each square, always writing the capital letter first. So let's see if we can do this together. The upper right-hand corner square. What do you think the genotype, the two-letter combination of the trait, will be in this square if we're taking the letter above and the letter to the left? What do you think that's going to be? Yes, BB. They're all going to be BB. But what you need to focus on is capitalization dominant recessive. So let's try that again. What do you think we're going to fill in this right hand square with? Okay. And remember, the capital letter is always first. So capital B, lowercase b. How about the lower left? We're going to take the letter from above, letter to the left, put them both together, and what do you got? capital B, lowercase b. And finally, in the lower right-hand corner, put the two letters together, and what do you got? Capital B, lowercase b. In other words, here's the deal. If we have these two parents, a purebred recessive and a purebred dominant, it's going to produce offspring that are all hybrids. They are all now heterozygous. They're all heterozygous offspring. Now, we're going to go through calculating the, uh, the percentage of the outcome, and we can do this underneath the example in your notes. So let's Let's calculate the, uh, the outcome here. And I know this one is going to be really easy. The next one will be a little bit more challenging. So here's the deal. Just like when you flip a coin, there's a one in two probability it's going to land either heads or tails. Just like a dotted cube, when you roll it, you have a one in six chance that it's going to be one of those six numbers. With a Punnett square, there are four possible outcomes, a total of four possibilities. So to calculate the percent outcome, here's what we do. We take each of the genotypes, and the genotype we have here is capital B, lowercase b. It is a hybrid or heterozygous, heterozygous. And how many of them are there? How many capital B, lowercase b's are there, everybody? Four. So there are four hybrids, four heterozygous, four capital B, lowercase b. Say it as you wish. They're all the same thing. Out of how many possible squares are there? Four. So it's four of four. 
So for capital B lowercase b, we calculate the percent outcome by dividing 4 by 4. And 4 divided by 4 expressed as a percentage is 100%. Remember, to express as a percentage, 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 100 is 100%. Now, hopefully you are writing this all down because this is the example, the model example that we're going to be following in the next practice one, the next example, which is to the right of that one on page 71. So let's get to it. Here's another Punnett square that we're going to work on. And we're going to be crossing, I will tell you what we're crossing. Right now we're crossing a hybrid parent and a hybrid parent. So two hybrids we're going to be crossing. Now I'm going to tell you right now we're going to use the letter B again for our genotypes. But my question to you is this. What is another word for hybrid? Hopefully you said heterozygous. And a hybrid or heterozygous, what kind of traits are in a hybrid? Dominant, recessive, or both? Hopefully, you said both. So what kind of letters do we use to represent a hybrid or heterozygous genotype? Capital and lowercase letters. So here is the example in our Punnett square of crossing two hybrid parents. The one hybrid parent is on the top, capital B, lowercase b. And over on the left-hand side is the genotype of the second hybrid parent, capital B, lowercase b. Now, I'm going to give you a moment to see if you can figure out what you should be filling in for the genotypes inside our Punnett square for the cross between two hybrids. But I'll give you the first one together. Remember that for each of the four squares, you take the letter above and the letter to the left, you put them both together, and the capital letter is always written first, and each square will have two letters. So our first possible outcome in this cross between two hybrids would be a purebred dominant or a homozygous dominant. Take a moment now and fill in the other three remaining boxes or squares. All right, hopefully this is what you got in your book. Hopefully when you solved your Punnett square, you got in the upper right-hand corner a hybrid or heterozygous, capital B, lowercase b. The same thing in the lower left, remembering always to write the capital letters first. And in the lower right-hand corner, hopefully you got a purebred recessive, purebred recessive or homozygous recessive. If you didn't get this, if you didn't understand this, I'd encourage you after class to watch this video segment again uh, to refresh your memory on how to fill in the Punnett square. But here's what we end up with. We have two hybrids, one purebred dominant and one purebred recessive. Here they are. Two hybrids, capital B, lowercase b, one purebred dominant, capital B, capital B, and one purebred recessive, lowercase b, lowercase b. And now under that Punnett square, I would like you, oops, under that Punnett square, I would like you to calculate the percentage outcome or the, uh, the outcome percentage 
for each of those four outcomes. I'm going to give you a moment. Pause me now and see if you can calculate the outcome. All right. Hopefully you got something like this. And I'll explain it to you in case you didn't get this. Make sure you do correct your notes so that you do get this. First thing I encourage you to do is to count up how many of each genotype you have. So we've got two, capital B, lowercase b. We got two of the hybrids. We have two hybrids out of a possible total of four, because there are four boxes in the Punnett square. We have one, capital B, capital B, right here, out of four. And we, and by the way, the capital B, capital B, homozygous dominant or purebred dominant. And we've got one, lowercase b, lowercase b, purebred recessive or homozygous recessive, one out of four. So to calculate the percentage outcome of each, here's all we do. We take the number there are divided by the total number. So for the hybrid, there are two out of four which comes out to 50%. The purebred dominant, one out of four, 25%. And purebred recessive, one out of four, 25%. So what does that mean? What that means is this. If two hybrid parents, and this could be regarding any trait. If you want to think of humans, you could think of hair color, eye color, etc. Those visible characteristics are reflected by or determined by the genotype. The genotype is what we use in the Punnett square. So if we've got two hybrid parents, the probability that they are going to have a purebred dominant, 25%. A purebred recessive, 25%. Or a hybrid, 50% chance. There's a 50% chance that two hybrid parents are going to have offspring that are hybrids. Now, a Punnett square does not mean that two parents are always going to have four children or four kids or four baby plants or whatever the organism is. No, 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 no. This is a method of determining probability, okay? When we use the the two genes from each parent, there are always four possible total outcomes. And that's why we calculate things in terms of either 0%, 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100% chance. So your answers to all of the percent outcomes are going to be multiples of 25%. Uh, as a little hint for you as we move forward to some more challenging Punnett Square practice items. So I want you to turn the page here to page 72, and there are four practice Punnett Squares I want you to work on for uh, a number of minutes here. So I'm going to show them to you now, and then hopefully we'll have some time to discuss them at the at when you're all finished. Okay? So let me read it to you first. And then you can get started working on each of these. In the first Punnett square on that page, I want you to cross a homozygous dominant with a heterozygous organism. Now, for each of these Punnett squares, you can use any letters you want to represent the genotypes. I just encourage you to use a letter that is super clear to be able to tell the difference between capital and lowercase letters. And make sure you use the examples from the previous page to help you when completing these four examples. So first one, homozygous dominant and a heterozygous. Punnett square number two, you're going to cross a heterozygous organism with a homozygous recessive. Then you're going to cross a homozygous recessive with a homozygous dominant. And then finally, you're going to cross a homozygous recessive with a homozygous 
recessive. And for each Punnett square, I want you to calculate the percentage outcomes for each of the genotypes that are produced in each Punnett square. So I'm going to pause now and give you several minutes to work on these, and then we'll be back to review them. Okay, we're back, and we're going to try and review these four Punnett squares together. And I'll do them on the board up in the front of the room for you, uh, and you can check your notes. So the first one was a homozygous dominant with a heterozygous organism. I'll pause now so that we can work on this together. Number two, a cross between a heterozygous organism with a homozygous recessive. Number three, a cross between a homozygous recessive with a homozygous dominant. And finally, four, a cross between a homozygous recessive with a homozygous recessive. Very good. Hopefully you did very well on those four Punnett squares, and hopefully you're starting to get the hang of how to determine the genotypes of the parents and how to determine the, uh, the percentage outcome once you have filled in the Punnett square. Now, tomorrow we're going to be doing a lab activity dealing with tribbles. So I encourage you to read over your lab activity for tomorrow so that you can be prepared to work on calculating the outcomes for these interesting creatures that uh, I'm going to uh, bring into the classroom tomorrow and we will breed them together because they can be bred at a very rapid pace. So, tomorrow, lab on tribbles. And so, until then, I'm going to say bye-bye.